Hi everyone, I'm here with my daily video and today we're going to be looking at my daughter's planner. Um, I have uh, my daughter um, planning alongside me and in my last daily video I talked about how I do something called scaffolding and that is um, a methodology like a teaching methodology and approach to planning or I'm sorry uh, an approach to teaching that um, helps learners do things like um, develop new skills cultivate new skills and practice them in a way that's a little bit like having kind of training wheels so if you would like to see how I do planning with my daughter who's eight years old and um, if you'd like to hear a little bit about what scaffolding looks like um, in the way of of uh, teaching uh, my daughter, or really, I guess you could say, I don't know, anybody who might be getting started, um, I think that this would work, not just like, you know, my daughter who's eight years old, um, then I invite you to stick around for the video and uh, we'll just kind of talk planning as we normally do. So let's go ahead and watch the video. So I'm going to flip the camera around in just a moment, um, but what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison of what um, my weekly kind of planning setup looks like in my on-the-go Filofax personal compact size um, binder. Um, and we, we both use a very similar kind of a planner setup, and there's a very specific reason why that is, and I'll get into that once I flip the camera around and we look at both planners kind of side-by-side. Um, and um, just kind of for your own reference, um, my daughter and I both, uh, well I have a Filofax Osterly that I got off of eBay however, whenever, long ago, it was like pre-loved and it was one of my, you know, Filofax kind of unicorns that I really wanted. It's like um, the only six ring binder that's like kind of the personal size that I have anymore. Um, I tend to get one thing that I like and then just stick with that and be very brand loyal, so that's kind of what I have. Um, and then my daughter has an old Filofax um, personal size that is, it's hearts themed and it's canvas on the outside. Um, I got it from the Filofax shop in Australia, and I mentioned that in a couple of videos back about places that you can get Filofax. Um, sometimes for discounted rates, so I will link um, the information for that um, online shop in the description of this video. And um, you know, I otherwise probably would have gotten rid of this binder uh, however long ago, but it was really kind of beat up and it seemed like the perfect little kind of planner to get started with for my daughter. And she always had really, really loved it. And um, I got it for like maybe like 10 or $15 whenever I did get it. I don't even remember when I got it. And so um, she just seemed to be the likely, uh, you know, individual to to receive it. Um, and, and I gave it to her before Michael's Recollections came out with, with their planners. Otherwise, um, the six ring binder that Michael's Recollections sells is a really, really great, um, just kind of um, budget friendly option for, um, if your kids want to get into planning and specifically six ring binder planning. Um, I tend to really like binder planning just because it makes planning modular, meaning it allows you to um, pull pages off of the rings, so off of the binding, and then pop them right back on. Um, I guess you could say it's a little bit like, um, like disc bound. Um, the only difference I would say is that, um, well binder planning always reminded me a little bit of like Trapper Keepers, if you're familiar with that from like the 80s, um, that's basically like a binder with kind of like a flap that closes and it just makes everything a little bit more secure. So I guess there's some nostalgia that kind of goes along with it. And so um, a personal size planner binder, so that's like the size that Michael's Recollections has, or Filofax Personal or even Kiki K Medium. Um, sometimes you can get Kiki K's for really cheap. Um, that size, the medium size, the personal size, it's really, really great for um, for young adults or kids to kind of get started with just because it's a nice portable size. Um, it feels really official and um, I work in a field of user experience design and that basically looks at kind of the whole experience of using a product or um, the whole experience of uh, it's hard to explain. There's a lot that goes into user experience design. I'll have to do like a whole video on that, but anyway, so 
Let me flip the camera around so that we can go ahead and just kind of get looking at these planners. And um, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. So here are the two planners that we have. This one, again, is mine that I always share and always show, and this is my daughter's. And um, I'm going to pop this open. Um, just kind of in the planner community, they call this snap here. They call, it's known as a popper, um, what some people call it. Um, but this is what my next week looks a little bit like, and I pre-stickered it because that's how I do. I batch prep things. I have here kind of a little bit of a guiding quote from Harry Potter, and I've shared that before. And I love planner clips. I make them, I sell them in my shop. And I also use them as kind of page holders as much as like bookmarks. So they kind of do double duty. They're really, they're really great like that. We're gonna go ahead and pop open my daughters. This was something that I shared in a video kind of previously and you'll see that we both have planner clips on there or planner bows on there. Um, and I do that for a very specific reason because I have discovered just as a teacher that the more that you can just model the behavior that you want and then have just kind of like the the vessel of what you model with, the more you can make it something that can be followed visually, um, the easier it is for the person who is trying to follow the example to um, just kind of fall in step with you and um, and it's just easier for them if like your examples look kind of or if your example can look the same as what they're working with so as i said in my last video um my daughter she does prefer more of a book style like this and that's perfectly understandable and so what i do with her is i set up two different sets of planner pages one that is that is one that's very similar to mine here um, hers is a little bit less structured because see how I have the double headings here that split up the day and I have a lot more white space. And hers over here, it is more no white space. And then it has a lot more pictures and things. Not nearly as many headings and things, but a lot more that, sh that can be like visually read. There we have the weekend banner same oh I had a different weekend banner in this one but um, this overall um, is generally the way that our war our uh, kind of week will look together and you can even see just by theme just the visual theme of this being Harry Potter and I put a little gold foil from Michaels on there you could be great you know it's all here in your head and I just put that over there so again Hers is a little bit of an echo of mine. And this is all in just the same sort of um, color scheme of Harry Potter. And I have her planner pages set up that I'm gonna go through and help her to kind of pre-sticker that will go along with mine. Um, so the color themes matches or just like the general theme matches. Here's another Harry Potter quote down here. And these are just great things. I mean, Harry Potter is such a great work of literature to study. There's great, great symbology and metaphors to kind of um, draw from. But we have some stickers in here that we made for homeschooling and um, some that we got from kind of other places on Etsy. But on Mondays typically, you know, we always sit down and we want to try and do planning so that we can kind of forecast and visualize what the week ahead looks like. And then here, this is a little box so that we can pack orders um, for you know our Etsy shop since we're running a sale and we're hoping that we have some orders that we can pack and get shipped out. And what I am going to start having her do is start to do some observational notes of um, some of the more challenging tasks that um, she's not yet kind of responsible with doing, but just her kind of learning how to take notes based upon observation. And then here is an open space here where she will be able to write in something kind of of her choosing that will go along with our overall kind of curriculum. Now sometimes what we do with just the visual kind of theme of the stickers and everything is we will sometimes use that as a little bit of the overall learning theme for our homeschool kind of adventures. We're not doing that for Harry Potter just because Harry Potter is a really, really long book. We can't quite get through that just yet, but we will get there and then we will have another Harry Potter Harry Potter themed week. Here we have um, the highlighter stickers 
And um, we made these. We made this one, we made this one, we made this one right here that says blog. Um, just because um, what I'm going to start doing with her to infuse a little bit of technology education, keyboarding, and then just writing for an audience is I'm going to set up a little bit of a blog for her that's going to be closed and just for like the family to kind of read and comment on so that she can do a little bit of just like writing about what her day was like and that's a great way to help teach kids how to use social media in a responsible and respectful way um, it gives them a feeling of importance um, it helps them again to learn how to write for an audience so um, we're gonna work on setting up a blog so that she can write it and then just She'll write about all manner of things. She'll probably write about our dogs because that's how it ends up happening. So that's going to be on Tuesday. And we will write in a little bit of something there to explicate what this is going to be. Um, she'll have a regular sort of a writing assignment. Sometimes we'll do gratitudes. We'll write those down. And the highlighters are here just because um, we like to do um, research, um, not necessarily online, but in books. And so what we'll do is anytime we come across a word that is... Um, extra challenging. We will take it to the dictionary and we will do a little bit of kind of research in the dictionary and we will highlight the word in the dictionary that we learned about and then what we can do in this open space is like kind of write our most favorite challenging word that we learned about. And then this right here, this little TV icon, um, what I had her do before I even went through and stickered the page is I had her do a little bit of pre-planning. So um, what I had her do is, this is just a Target kind of a list pad, and she decorated it with her own stickers that we made ourselves. And she wrote down some of the things that she would really, really like to do this week. So um, she wrote down, of course, the days that she thought that we could do them, um, but that's not always something that's promised. What I do is I will take from over here some of the things that she wants to do, and I will plug them in to the week that we have here. So then she feels like she, um, you know, had some say a little bit in kind of what the plans are. Um, and I think that that's actually really important because um, she knows that I'm listening to her and that I respect kind of um, what her perspective is. And um, I want her to start feeling autonomy and independence and um, feel a little bit of ownership for her time. So because she had on her wish list here, DIYs on YouTube, uh, we, we watch a lot of DIY. She does um, YouTube for Kids, which is a really great app. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of research on YouTube to find a DIY that we can do at home together. Um, over here on Wednesday, she really wanted to have like a manicure day. So again, that's off of her list here. And so um, I figured that Wednesday would be a good day for that. And then we have this right here, this like a uh, kind of reward ribbon with an icon in the center and that's so that I can talk to her about um, finances um, like financial planning and mathematics um, so we have a calculator there and this right here is to prepare for my parents upcoming anniversary so that we can make like a card or something for um, for them um, we like to do handmade make make people's gifts so this is just a reminder for us to have like a little bit of a DIY kind of a, a crafting day. Down here on Thursday through Sunday, um, we we try if we can to like get as much done as we can for work kind of before Friday. So then on Friday, if we have any running around that we need to do, we can do that on Friday, like delivering things to the post office. So I put a little kind of icon up there for a little letter. Um, and then Friday is usually just a jam-packed day. I have all sorts of things that I have to do. And um, so this arrow right here with the open box, that's a label. So this shows her that the work that we do today, it could carry over into Friday. Or the work that we do today, or I'm, I'm sorry, on Thursday, it it's very much something that um, helps to inform what happens on Friday. So either we do work on Thursday and we don't finish it, so we have to do it on Friday, or the work that we do on Thursday, um, we have to plan that we have to do that work on Thursday so that we can do what we need to on Friday. So that's why that kind of bridges between the Thursday and the Friday. So I have the crayon box here just because since Fridays tend to be kind of busy, um, this is a little bit of a reminder for her that she can do some independent sort of creative stuff um, kind of on a busy Friday if if um, it kind of comes to that. We also have a cupcake here 
to help her to remember that we're kind of working towards like a treat, maybe like baking together or just doing something like having ice cream for dinner or something silly like that. We have music on here and then we also have this that's a little bit of like our social studies sort of sticker. Um, and the great thing is, is we do something, uh, an approach to learning that's project based and that's multidisciplinary, which basically means we will layer different subject matter in order for it all to kind of like contribute to kind of like one big picture sort of idea. So if we want to do social studies and music, we can actually do like world music and that would actually cover both areas of content. We also have a laundry basket on there just um, for us to, um, you know, go through and like wash your sheets and things like that. So these are all just visual cues that I have down here in the way of just um, pictographs almost. Um, that then we can fill in the information kind of as we go through. So it's a little bit of plan as you go. Here we have on Saturday, um, and Saturday is a day when we can just kind of rest and be at home. Um, and I just have some open boxes and things here. And then Sunday here is, you know, our time when we want to think ahead and plan, um, enjoy family time, and then there's an open box for her to write information. So the next set of pages is one that's book style. And the reason why it's book style is because um, this is for us to fill in as we go through the week. For us to kind of document information so that then we can show the homeschool coordinator in our local kind of area. Um, right here, what we have here is a little bit of a reading log. So we have um, this right here, which is a stack of books. And then we have this here for her to write down the books that she reads. And this is just a header label. Um, a be grateful box so that then she can write in gratitudes in this box here. And what she'll do is she'll complete this or will complete this kind of in a guided sort of a way over time. Um, like in partnership with what we do over here. We have right here, um, we have a clipboard here that I'm going to write a little bit of a note of just like a learning objective. And then these are just kind of like bullet points. This right here is something um, that connects to something that is called inquiry-based learning. And that's where you basically take uh, questions that might arise during your time of learning and you record them and then you use this as a little bit of your, your guidance for what you do kind of in the coming weeks. So then, um, you know, students that I've worked with, they always have lots and lots of questions. So this is a little bit of a box for us to write down the questions and then for us to connect to future learning. This box up here is just a box of just important information. We also like to do things where we like to try and find rainbows, um, just places like where the light might kind of go through the window and it might cast a rainbow on the wall or if we see one during the, the week. So this is kind of our rainbow box, like where we saw a rainbow or kind of how we saw Because we usually always see like one or two during the week and it's, it's a little bit of a game that we play. Um, and this might end up being a little bit of like our happy mail sort of log, like how much happy mail we sent or received for the week. So this is a little bit of just like maybe some statistics for the week. On the menu, this, ah, uh, this sticker got a little bit of a water droplet on it. That was supposed to be the Princess Bride. But um, what we'll do here is we might watch the movie The Princess Bride and then have a little bit of a fun meal that goes along with the movie and then um, you know write something about it there. Payday right here. This is a little bit of a section where she can write what she's working towards when it comes to payday. Um, and I had mentioned back here that we we're going to talk about kind of personal finances and everything and um, we are working towards coming up with a little bit of a structure of just um, like kind of fun money like kid friendly money um, that she can have a little bit almost I don't want to say like monopoly money but it's just like kid friendly currency that she can use to kind of um, work towards things just here at home and like a treasure box or something like that. So this would be the box where she kind of can write what her goal is for what she wants to do with her payday money. And right down here, the weekend, sometimes it's helpful to her if we have a box where it's just the weekend where we can say, okay, we're gonna save that for the weekend and we will write things in there so that then she knows that we kind of heard what her um, requests are, what she hopes that we do, and then we just put them in the weekend box. And then we can refer to that 
once we get to the weekend and then we can use that to kind of like pop in here. And I think that I've shown this in other videos, but um, here's a little bit of what the learning on the go looks like for us. And these are old Erin Condren pages that I made into kind of fold outs. And it includes page flags where I um, corrected things that she did. And um, she wrote a poem here called Raining Macarons. And this is something that is very similar to like a lap book. And this is something that we did some time ago, um, just because we don't always do learning on the go, but we can with this setup, because it's like a mini binder. So it's kind of nice to kind of have that. And then we have just some sections and things here that don't really have anything, but this is a little bit of her area where she can kind of like play, I guess you could say, um, and, and just start developing the habits of filing things as she sees fit. One of um, the really great things that you can do with someone who is just starting out with planning, you know, a, a young student or just a mini planner, is just getting them into the habit of just filing things or sorting or categorizing things. Um, just doing that, it helps to promote or just seed kind of ideas of getting into structured thinking and like visual kind of recording of things in a planner. So I really hope you enjoyed um, that video and looking at my daughter's um, planner binder. Um, as I said kind of in the beginning of the video, what I do is I do something um, in teaching called scaffolding. And again, just to reiterate, um, scaffolding is a method of teaching, an approach to teaching. It's kind of like um, helping skills to be cultivated and developed in a way that's a little bit of like metaphorical sort of training wheels. Um, think if you think about like the scaffolding on a building, like when when um, something is being constructed and they put scaffolding up in order for people to stand on it and in order for um, things to be safe while the construction is kind of going on, you can think about scaffolding and learning as similar to that. Um, it's about um, building something and then also having some sort of kind of um, safety sort of functionality there uh, for the building to happen in in um, a protected, uh, uh, functional, um, a constructive sort of way. So I don't know how else to put it. Um, I probably could go on for like a little bit longer about that, but I, I won't. Like you get the, ba the big idea. Um, so um, I will do some more videos about um, planning as it has to do with um, with like young planners, like mini planners, I guess you could say, or planners of just all ages because, um, you know, as it happens, when kids see us doing things, whether it's students seeing teachers doing planners or, um, you know, young planners like mini planners are kids, the planner kids of the planner community, when they see their parents doing planning, that's actually a really wonderful thing because kids naturally are inclined to imitate what they see um, they're inclined to be, uh, you know, they will be your echo. Sometimes you will hear kids say something or do something and it'll really kind of take you back because you don't realize how in the world, where in the world did they pick that up. But it's because, you know, kids are like sponges um, when it comes to learning. So um, if you are practicing like uh, healthy habits and things or just ways of doing things, and that includes um, using planning as a way to kind of like structure your life or just to kind of like hold things up and to um, have good directed kind of goal attainment, then um, you should expect to see that your child might want to kind of get into it alongside you. Um, and that's a positive and wonderful thing. So I will try and do some more uh, videos about kind of how you can help be a little bit of a tour guide to kind of the mini planner that you might have in your life. Um, and like I said, that could be your child, it could be a little brother or sister, it could be um, someone that you spend time with because you like nanny them, it could be any of that. It could be your students, you might be uh, like a student teacher or, or a teacher, so. I can give you all sorts of tips and tricks on that in a different video, but that's it for this video and I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching it. Um, if you haven't been watching my Instagram, you want to keep an eye out on my Instagram just because um, 
either my personal one or my planner dedicated one and I have all my contact information in the in the description of this video um, but um, I'm gonna be doing some more new releases in addition to the planner stickers that I just did today um, and so you're gonna want to kind of like see that so thank you so much for watching this video thank you for spending your time with me today I look forward to seeing you in tomorrow's daily video and I will see you then bye